Hello, everyone. My name is David Creel. I'm coming to you from Deer Park, Texas. I am a certified coach with Ziegler. I'm a choose to win coach. I'm a see you at the top coach. I recently got my master coach with the Ziegler organization. I'm an Eagles impact coach, and I'm also the world's best double Eagle coach. Welcome to the Transformation Mastermind. Now, wherever you're joining me from tonight, you need to grab a pen and a piece of paper, or at least get your phone out to write some notes down, but preferably a pen and a piece of paper. Tonight, we're going to go over the six steps to creating an extraordinary life. Now, I am glad you're here. Thank you for giving me some of your most valuable time, uh, valuable asset, which is your time. Now, let me start off with a question. Why are you here? You're giving me, like I said earlier, your most valuable asset. Because time, once you spend it, it's gone. You can never get it back. So why are you here? And get specific, what result would you like from our time together today? Now, while you're thinking about that, let me tell you a little bit about my family. I got married in April of 08 to Jennifer, and we have a 10-year-old son named Max, and we have a French bulldog puppy who's a little over a year old, and we have a cat named Biggie. And I'm glad you're here. So again, why are you here? What's your intentions for being here today? Maybe you're here because you saw some of your friends succeeding and you're like, how come I can't succeed? Or you saw some of your friends on Facebook and you're comparing their highlights to your lowlights. Just a side note, for the most part, the life that you see on Facebook isn't the real life. So don't compare yourself. Don't compare your where you are to their highlight reels. Because how many times have you seen on Facebook, oh, I just had a knockdown drag out with my spouse, and I just uh, put my hand through the, through the uh, sheetrock of the house. You didn't hear that. Maybe you're here because you're tired of being tired. Maybe you're here because... You don't have everything in life you want. My friend Steve, a couple of days ago, was on a plane. And when he was flying into the airport, he looked down and saw some people on a boat. And he thought, oh, man, how come I had to work today and then get on this plane and go to this meeting? I'd like to be on a boat. And he started to get jealous that he was on the boat. Now, he was on a plane going to a business meeting. But perhaps the better questions Steve should have asked was, what can I do to get a boat or be able to take off in the middle of the week or take a week off a month? You know, maybe you're here because you work too much and you don't see your family enough or you think it all depends on you, which it hardly ever does. And if you think that's the case, take a deep, big breath of oxygen and see how much you really control. Maybe you're here because your bank account ain't what you want it to be. Maybe you're here because you want a new car or a new job or a new partner or a new church or a new house or you want to lose some weight or you want to build water wells for people in Africa or finance water wells to be paid for people in Africa. Maybe you want to start a side hustle. Maybe you need to start a different side hustle. Maybe your side hustle is a hobby and not a business, and you'd like to turn it into a business. 
Maybe you'd like to sell your business. Maybe you'd like to start a business. Maybe you'd like to get a raise. Whatever you're here and whatever why ever you're here, get specific on why you're here. Now, another important question is this. What do you want out of life? And you can't say, I want to lose weight or I want to make more money or I want to have better hours at the job. You have to be specific. For example, where would you like to be six months from now? 12, 31, 22, where would you like to be? Now, a key question to ask is where are you right now? The greatest GPS in the whole world needs two things to work. It needs where you are and where you want to be. You could spend $10 trillion on a GPS, and if it doesn't know where you currently are and where you want to be, it's useless. But again, you've got to have a specific goal. Like say you want to lose weight. You can't say I want to lose weight. You say I want to weigh however many pounds it is on this day. So say you weigh 200 pounds and you want to wear, weigh 180 pounds. When? It, three years from now? 18 months from now? Two days from now? You got to be specific because if you don't have a specific end date to your goal, you just have a dream. For a goal to be effective, it has to have a specific date because the numbers don't lie. So say in 90 days, you want to lose 20 pounds. So then you can backtrack it from where you currently are, 200 pounds. I want to be 180 pounds on 90 days from today. And you can do the math and figure out on average how much you need to lose a week or a day. And then you'll hit your goal. Now, fitness is an interesting concept because everyone knows the secret to losing weight. Everyone does. Let me guess. You probably know what I'm about to tell you. You got to eat less and work out more. That's the secret. It's really not that difficult. Now, some people say that you can work out five minutes a day for twice a week and you can lose all the weight you want or you take this magic pill and all the, shred, the ped, pounds just shred away. But is that really the case? Because if you don't take it off your mind, you're probably going to put it back on. Now, one thing to remember, especially with fitness, you didn't wake up on a Monday from Sunday and put on 20 pounds in 24 hours. That's impossible. So... One of the things is, since you didn't put it on overnight, you can't take it off overnight. I've heard it said like this, whenever you start a workout routine, it takes 30 days for you to notice it. And it takes 60 days for your immediate friends and family to notice it. Then it takes 90 days for everyone else to notice it, okay? But you still have to be specific. I mean, how many of you have ever been on a diet and all you did was lose a month? You know, you have to be specific. I'm going to weigh whatever the weight is at this day, and then you backtrack it and you either hit the goal or you don't hit the goal. Now, if you don't hit the goal, one thing I would avoid saying is, 
you know, say the go- say the time passed and you didn't hit your goal. And then you put on a little bit extra. Say your goal is to lose 30 pounds and you lost 20 pounds and you put um, three back on. Well, you don't have to say, I lost 20, but then I put on five. From your original goal, you lost, you lost 15. So you can say, I'm down 15 pounds. You made up the number of the goal anyway. So if you don't quite hit the goal, you can just extend the goal. It's no big deal. It's an arbitrary number. It's all made up. So where do you want to be in six months? What are you going to do differently in the next six months where 2023 will be different than 2022 and 2021? and 2020, and 2018, and 2015, and 2010, and 2000. You know, it said, the definition of insanity is continuing doing, continue doing the same things over and over again, and expecting different results. So what, what are you going to do different? Where do you want to be in six months? Imagine it's six months from today. It's, you know, basically six months, January 1st, 2023. What would you like your life or business to look like? Something to think about. You got to know what you want. You got to be specific. For example, if you ask me what I want for my birthday and what I want for Christmas, I'm going to tell you what I want because I know what I want. I'm going to have a list. It's going to have links. So there can be no misinterpretation. The only rule about the list is don't deviate from the list because I know what I want. Now, if you don't know what you want, you have to settle for what you get. Think about that for your mental candy tonight. So what do you want? Where do you want to be? Be specific. Now, another question is this. There's probably a gap between where you currently are and where you want to be. So what's that gap look like? It starts by taking inventory of where you currently are and then asking the question, What do you want? The most important question is not what do you want? The most important question is why do you want it? You might say, oh, I want a new car. Well, why do you want a new car? Oh, so uh, my car doesn't keep breaking down. Why is that important? Oh, so I can save money. Okay, why is that important? Oh, so I can uh, take my family on vacation. Oh, okay. Okay, see, now that's specific. But then the next question is, where do you want to go? You just want to just roll up to the airport and just buy a ticket to wherever they put you on the plane? You may be trying to go to San Diego and you end up in Iraq. That probably wouldn't be very good. So where are you and where do you want to be? Now, earlier I asked you, what were your intentions for being here? If I had to guess, this is just a guess, that's probably not the first time you've said whatever you said either to yourself or out loud or you wrote down. It's probably not the first time that uh, you've said that. So what have you done about that already? You know, if you know where you are and you know where you want to be, why haven't you done it yet? Something to think about. Now, I started reading this book, Ed Milet, The Power of One More. And I read this a couple of days ago, and this was this is really good. It's fitting for right now. 
He says the five principles of time management. Number one, add more days to your day. Now, Zig Ziglar had a philosophy. It was called the day before vacation attitude. Now, imagine it's Friday morning. And Friday afternoon, you're going on vacation for a week. Doesn't matter where you're going, but you're going on vacation. You're going to have no, no email access. You're not going to be tied to the office at all. You're going to be on vacation. You're going to be disconnected from the office. My guess is whenever you go into work that day, there's no water cooler talk. There's no, hey, can I uh, bend your ear for five minutes? There's, I don't know how I'm going to get this stuff done. No, you don't have none of that. What you do is you probably get to work early because when five o'clock hits or whenever you get off work at 501, you're out the door because you're going on vacation. So the night before you probably set out your priorities. Then when you get to work, you're focused and probably you got a week's worth of work done before lunch because whenever you go on vacation next week, you don't want to be bothered. But what would happen if you took that to your job every day? Because you can always be on vacation. Now, you can't physically always be on vacation. You can always go in your mind. No question about that. Probably the favorite vacation I've ever been on. I've been to Hawaii. I've never been. It lives up to the hype. It does not suck. But on my desktop, I've got a picture of Hawaii. On my, I can look at that desktop and I can go back mentally to when we were in Hawaii. So if you add more days to your day, you'll be more productive. When you're more productive, Generally, the people that are most productive get more responsibility, which comes with more money. And if your current employer won't pay you, someone else will. So something about that. The next thing in this book says, approach time with a greater sense of urgency. It says urgency is the key. From my experience, this, there's a direct correlation between how fast you'll, you'll run versus, versus how close you are to the finish line. Have you ever noticed that sometimes, like Jerry Rice back, for example, back in the day, they said when, the, when he was just running, he wasn't as fast. He wasn't like the fastest guy on the field. But whenever the ball in the, was in the air, he was able to run a little bit faster than the next guy. Same with golf. I love golf. The best players have a little bit extra in the tank when needed. So they have a very long hole. That's called a par five. It's a real long hole. Could be, could be 650 yards. But they know if they hit a really, really great drive, that's the first shot, they can maybe hit their second shot on the green and maybe make an eagle or a birdie. But they have a, a, another gear that goes along with this approach time with a greater sense of urgency and approach the finish line. They know if they hit a great shot and they hit it a little further than normal, that would help them for their next shot. So that's how, that's how it goes. You know, you go to a, a restaurant you ever seen a tip jar? If you work in a restaurant, here's a little tip. When you open the cash register, don't leave the tip jar empty because no one likes to start things. Put a couple dollars in there or a five, and that way people don't have to go first. And let's leave it at that. 
Okay, the third thing he says, learn how to control time instead of time controlling you. How you do this is the first 30 to 60 minutes of your day are critical. Are you one that sleeps with your phone right next to your pillow and it's not on vibrator silent? So all throughout the night, you're responding to every text, every phone call, every email. It's not a way to live. Try this. Put your phone in another room. Oh, no. Try it. What's the worst that can happen? If you do that, say you do that tonight, you're going to put your phone on the charger in another room. I promise you, in the morning, the sun will come up in the east and set in the west. I promise you. Now, if the sun does not come up in the east, I promise you, you're not going to be worried what's on your phone because we're going to have bigger problems. So, how do you approach the first 30 minutes of the day? Do you have a routine? Is, do you like your routine if you have one? Most people don't have a routine. Most people like to hit the snooze button one or seven times. But if you're like me and don't really like getting up early in the morning or super early in the morning, all the snooze button does is allow you to wake up more than once. So why don't you just get up when the, when the, when the clock goes off? But how you control your first 30 minutes, you should not be responding to email in the first 30 minutes. You've got to get your mind prepared for the day. I promise you, the email that you need to respond to will still need to be responded to in 30 minutes after you wake up. I promise you. And there's never in your life been a true actual emergency where someone sent you an email i promise you because if someone if there was an, a real emergency either someone's going to text you or your phone's going to ring and they're going to call you so that one was free by the way okay let's move on to the next one number four measure your performance often track everything What's get, what gets tracked gets measured. And what's me, what gets measured gets scheduled. And what's scheduled gets done. Okay? The numbers do not lie. That's why in any perfor, professional sporting event ever, there's always a scoreboard. Because we like to know who's winning and who's losing. If you're winning, maybe you need to do, do a different play. If you're losing, maybe you need to try something drastic to try to get back in the game. But here's the thing about the scoreboard. There's also a clock. So just because you're losing at halftime doesn't mean you can't come back and win in the second half. That's why it's called halftime. So when I'm saying track everything, Say you're looking to grow your business. How many connections are you making? Track it. How many phone calls are you making? Track it. How much money would you like to make? Okay. Track it. Be specific. Okay. Let's make it, let's make it easy. I want to make 120 grand next year. Okay. Perfect. So 120 grand divided by 12. Captain Math. Uh, 10 grand a month. So if you want to make 10 grand a month, you need to make 2,500 a week. And if you want to make 2,500 a week, it's whatever 2,500 divided by seven is. It's not a, it's not an even number. It's three, $3,500, uh, $350 a day or whatever the number is. But track, 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 and keep track of your scoreboard. For example, my wife is graduating college in December. 
that number on the back of that board right there is how many days she has left. So every day I erase it and we lower it a day. When that gets to zero, she's done with school and we're tracking it. Now, John Wooden said this, John Wooden, coach at UCLA, um, won 11 championships. Yeah, not terrible. He said, if you don't have the time to do it right, when will you have the time to do it again? Something to think about. You know, the, whole, the old saying, measure twice, cut once. Same deal. Okay, and the fifth... Fifth is focus on the future. Here's the thing about the past. The past is called the past for a reason. There's nothing you can do about it. And whatever happened has happened to you, for the most part, has happened to other people too. But just because your past said one thing doesn't mean your future has to be the exact same. You can change that. You can't do anything about the past, but you can do stuff about the future. So that's, that's, what I, that's the thing. I'm going to go over them again. Out of the book, Power of One More. And my let, it's a great book, by the way. The Five Principles of Time Management. Add more days to your day. Remember the day before vacation mindset. Number two, approach time with a greater sense of urgency. Number three, learn how to control time instead of time controlling you. Remember, the first 30 to 60 minutes of your day are critical. That's the tone for your day. Number four, measure your performance often. Track, track, track. Oh, did I mention track? Track everything. And five, focus on the future. Your past is your past. The present is what you have, and the future is to be determined. The future can be a choice. Now, all this stuff you've probably never heard before, but you might, this may be new to some of you. But see, what would it look like to remove all these blind spots? A blind spot is simply, you know, you drive it in your car, you look out your window, and your car's in your blind spot. You may come, you may go over to the next lane, and there's a car there, you don't see them because they're in your blind spot. But once you're aware that you have a blind spot, you can do something about changing the blind spot. So what I have, I have a form. I'm going to put it in the chat. If what I've said today has at, resonated with you at all, and you'd like to have a conversation, here's my gift for you. You gave me 30 minutes of your time today, and I'm grateful. What I'd like to give you, if you're at all interested, and you, this has resonated with you, maybe, I, maybe you're thinking, is this guy reading my mail? Well, what's up with this guy? He's in my head. Well, because that makes you normal, okay? So what I'd like to do, I put it into the chat, the form. If you're at all interested in anything I've said has resonated with you, the gift I'd like to give you is I'd like to give you 30 minutes of my time. What that looks like is real simple. Fill the form out. I'll get it. And then we'll set up a conversation. I've got five or six more questions I can ask you. That can be a complete game changer for you. So if you're at all interested, don't hesitate to reach out. Y'all have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.